Welcome to this virtual presentation of one of my two uh, Ixoba 2022 paper. Uh, this one is in collaboration with Professor Valdis Boyarevich. And the subject is the stabilization of the aluminum reduction cell by oscillating current in magnetic compensation loops. So I'm uh, Dr. Max Dupuy. I have my PhD in chemical engineering since 1984 from Laval University. Uh, I worked 10 years for Alcan International. Uh, and then I started my own company in 1994 as a consultant. And um, I have like 30 plus years of paper, publishing papers on mathematical modeling of all the cell, uh, all kinds of uh, physics. So this one is on energy. So I will introduce the subject and then I will present uh, the Trimet uh, cell in uh, Hamburg, where this uh, that will be the, the the geometry that will be tested in, in here, and we will try uh, a few tests of compensation using dynamic compensation. And after that, mixing dynamic and static compensation for the last test. And then I will speak a bit about uh, what if you use a superconductor for, for to build those compensation loops. And also try to speculate on uh, the impact of the of this kind of dynamic compensation on, on the current efficiency. So the, the idea started with uh, some this uh, this device that is called a, a Capizza pendulum. So we can see the, the video. And this is the, uh, the this pendulum uh, uh, is the, at the origin of the idea of uh, Doug, uh, Douglas uh, Kelly from Rochester University. He said, well, why not uh, try something similar to stabilize an aluminum reduction? So if you look at this pendulum, it is unstable because it's a, it's a rigid pendulum upside down. So the, the mass is on the top and the pivot, uh, you see if there's no, not, you do nothing to it, it will drop down. Uh, and, but if you vibrate vertically, then the pendulum is, is stable on the vertical position up, upside down. So even if you push on it, it's, it's stable. So, so the idea is to use this kind of vibration uh, to stabilize uh, an annual reduction cell. And, and so there's two types of vibration you can introduce. It's a vibration on the force, uh, the Lorentz force, but you can first, it was, uh, the idea was to, and here I'm presenting the uh, Davidson, I call it the Davidson mobile. So the Davidson mobile is, a, is an imaginary thing that behaves similarly to uh, an annual reduction cell. Uh, but uh, you can solve for analytic, there's an analytical solution for this kind of uh, stability of this plate. So you have a plate here, so there's two dimensions to it. You have a length in X direction, a length in uh, Y direction. Uh, so that's a rigid plate of aluminum on a pivot. And it, uh, there's a, a, a material here that is a, uh, resistivity of electrolyte, but no viscosity, so it's uh, it's not influencing the the prevent no damping effect on on the motion of the plate. When and you have uh, the top that gave like an anode, provide a uniform or a, a uniform potential, and then there will be some current passing through because you're pulling current here in the middle of the plate right there, uh, in constant current when you, at least Davidson, it was a constant current. And if so if the plate move on this uh, pivot here, it will, in this part, move up, and then so the current will uh, get more intense on this side where there's less electrolyte thickness, and, and less on this side, and that will introduce some horizontal current in the plate, and that current will, with that magnetic field that is uniform, so that we have a, a uniform BZ, only BZ component, and uniform to uh, along the plate and uh, all to the ranger. And if you, if the, the plate is it's kicked, so if there's a motion introducing this part to move up, 
that we induce some current, horizontal current in the in the plate, and that horizontal current with that magnetic field with uh, induce a low and force, and and depending on the three uh, components, so the thickness of the electrolyte, the current density or the total current that we pull in, and the intensity of the magnetic field, you will uh, it will be a, a a stable or unstable condition. So that's the, the Davidson mobile. And the, Peter Davidson in that paper, he have uh, presented the analytical solution of this problem. Now what was was introduced extra is that uh, this year at uh, PMS, uh, this uh, pendulum was uh, modified so that we can uh, oscillate or uh, change the intensity of the current that is pulled down. And what was discovered uh, also analytic is that uh, this oscillation of the current uh, in some certain conditions stabilize the pendulum or, or, or in this case the, the, the mobile the, the Davidson mobile so, uh, and then we then and another paper in a UM paper uh, article and and a TMS paper we 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 use a, the trimet cell and we use the MHD Valdis to to analyze the association uh, of, of the cell pot line current uh, at that frequency of uh, 0.045 hertz or 22 second period. And that's uh, stabilize uh, the cell also. And uh, that was presented in, in the GOM uh, article and the TMS paper is that uh, you this is what uh, occur naturally. We have a, a rotating wave that uh, combine of those three combinations of those three modes, and on, uh, when you you introduce this oscillation of the of the current at this frequency of uh, 0 0.045 hertz, you instead you get the uh, standing wave with the combination of those two modes that they are higher mode, so the uh, this this wave is uh, more stable than the naturally occurring rotating wave. So so because that wave that is kind of forced to, to be uh, replace the, the naturally occurring wave is more stable, then you can reduce the ACD for uh, because simply because you are oscillating the current in the pot line. But the oscillating the current in the pot line is kind of a, a kind of a difficult to do because if you're doing the 22 percent oscillation of the pot line current you need to oscillate the power of the the smelter and on the on the grid by 36 percent and that uh, normally the smelter consume about uh, 210 megawatt so that's that's kind of a be you will not be a very uh, happy the grid uh, and not very very happy with the smelter during this kind of oscillation on this demand. So that might be a reason why you don't want to to stabilize your cell this way. And that's why then I uh, we had the idea of uh, testing another idea is to instead of oscillating the current of the pot line, we say we speculated that if you go back to the pendulum or the, the mobile. Instead of oscillating the current, we can oscillate the magnetic field. That will also create uh, an oscillation in the Lorentz force. But this this time, it's a magnetic field, an external magnetic field that you want to oscillate, keeping the the, the pot line current the same. And that was the idea that was uh, being test now. Now before getting to to the test, I will reintroduce the, the trimet cell. So the trimet cell is uh, was built in uh, 1970. The trimet uh, cell in 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 Hamburg was uh, is a, a Renault was a Renault P19 side by side uh, with four uh, end riser. You can see the layout here. So the the current the the collector bar you 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 collect the the current from this side of the pot the downstream side and you send it to this riser here 
and from the upstream you connect and then you send this to this riser so and after the modification done by VAW, they have uh, removed the, the, the downstream riser here, those two, and replaced them by side riser. So now you collect the current from the, the downstream to go zigzag to this point, you come back and then you, you feed from the side. And this change improved a lot of magnetic field, so that's the original magnetic field. So you add up to 180 gauss on the DZ, and it was reduced to about a let's say 80 on this side. So, so that was already a big improvement. And this is the cell that we is in operation now, and that's the the, the cell that was tested for the initial uh, testing of uh, oscillating the current in the pot line with the gain uh, first if you don't do anything the stability is uh, with the image design this is uh, predicted to be around 4.3 uh, centimeter ACD that was presented in a previous paper uh, and that's the base case so no oscillation of any kind the cell is predicted to be stable at about 4.3 centimeter ACD now, if you introduce the compensation loop, that was the, the, the two green extra pot bar here that are carrying only current for changing the magnetic field. And if you don't have any current in them, you have the, the magnetic field that was computed uh, here, this one here. So we are reproducing this in MAT values. And now if you bring current in, in the opposite direction of the pot line and the number negative here, uh, you improve the magnetic field. So, so you you push this down here a bit higher, and because you're pushing this side higher, well, this side was still moving higher, and now it's more symmetric. And then opposite here, you have a high positive that you can push down, and so so the the thing remains exactly twisted the same way, but uh, now it's a uh, it's more like a balance upstream, downstream. And in globally, the value are less. You go from about 60, 70 to 40, 50. At minus 20 kilo amps or, or 20 kilo amps in each compensation loop in the opposite direction of the uh, pot line current. So this, if you don't do a, any dynamic compensation, you simply run the current constant current in, in, in compensation loop, uh, you will improve the situation simply by doing that. But now here we want to test the dynamic compensation. So initially in the first three tests, I will not, uh, on average, bring any current. It will oscillate between positive and negative. So it will be on average zero comp uh, compensation. So the first one, it's uh, from plus and minus 40 kilo amps in those compensation uh, at this frequency of 0 0.049 with an ACD of 4.1. So here we have the three result. Uh, we have the Fourier uh, spectrum. So you have this uh, peak of all three values here at that frequency, of course. So you, the the red is the, uh, the current that is going from uh, Plus and minus for the uh, end, and then uh, the uh, the blue is the uh, the BZ that is oscillating with this middle axis here at one point on the on in the metal oscillating due to the oscillation of the compensation during the compensation loop, and this is a resulting uh, bat metal interface fluctuation. So it is completely stable. Because it's not growing, it will at 4.1 centimeter ACD. So uh, an ACD that will be unstable uh, without this uh, oscillation of the current uh, compensation. So that's the first test. The second one, we increase the in the uh, yeah the same frequency, and we have decreased the intensity. So only from plus 430 to minus 30. 
same same ACD, same frequency. Uh, so it's still stable. We have a different pattern for the oscillation, but that's still stable. The third one is a higher frequency, less ECD, 4 instead of 4.1. And we're back to plus and minus 40 kilohertz for the, the current, the, comp the two compensation loop. So again, this is a very much higher frequency oscillation, but uh, still completely stable. So that's the three results where you have only pure dynamic compensation. And after that, we have done a, uh, we know that passing on average uh, a negative current, it's improving the magnetic field, static magnetic field. So, so only doing that will improve the stability. So here we are, we are oscillating from zero to minus 20. So on average, minus 10 kilo amps uh, opposite to the uh, pot line direction because the pot line direction is plus by convention. So uh, we are back to the frequency we tested in the TMS paper this year, so 0 0.045, and at 4.1 centimeter ECD, and we can see here that the, the thing is at the same scale for the oscillation. So if you look at the scale for the interface oscillation from the previous, it's always the same scale. So you can see that at that scale, it's uh, dying to almost no oscillation at all visible at least uh, so it's uh, obviously way more stable than the previous test and uh, that's the last of just uh, unfortunately we those tests are lasting uh, to get an answer like this it's uh, about a day of cpu or at least more a bit more than overnight run so so mm, you are limited to the number of tests you want to, to, to perform unless you really want to seriously investigate the optimum solution. So we are not claiming that we have found the optimum solution at all. We simply have done a few tests to confirm that uh, this idea is working. Okay, so this is for the, uh, presenting the, the result we have achieved in that paper. Now after that we are Starting to speculate, what, how do you can you do this kind of a, a comp uh, dynamic uh, compensation or uh, using a oscillating current in the in compensation loop? So if we are using this uh, superconductor uh, bus bar instead of this kind of stack of plates, so this stack of plate here is uh, it can be replaced by this little conductor that is a uh, superconductor, but the, the problem is that you have to maintain this uh, at uh, 70 uh, Kelvin. So to get, maintain it, uh, it's surrounded by a cooling fluid, two pipes, one uh, and, uh, that is uh, you're, you're running some uh, cooling, uh, cooling system to maintain the, the superconductor at uh, 70 Kelvin. And then you can carry this uh, 20 kilo amps with uh, with essentially no resistance or very very little. I will see the so this was presented in this paper this the CRTMS. So I'm just speculating. Okay, let's use this. So this uh, this bus bar will compensation uh, superconductor compensation uh, bus bar will uh, require only 26 percent of the energy that would have been required to to do the same in the regular uh, bus bar, a much bigger section. And only 3% uh, of this 26% uh, or, or, or what is So the drop will be only 3% of what it would be the drop in, in this uh, bus bar. So, so you're, you're reducing the, the, the drop by 97% to, so 3% is left of the, the voltage drop in the bus bar. And what you require is 26% of the energy that would have been required for a regular bus bar. And so the main of energy is, is, is being used in the cooling system. 
And so if you oscillate the current in, in that conductor, you, you're only oscillating in this 2%. So that means that for the, the, the smelter that is doing this compensation, dynamic compensation in the, in the, you will have almost no impact on the grid. And that's the idea of using the superconductor. Okay, the next thing is, uh, well, yes, but what about driving this wave in, in the cell on the impact of this wave on the current efficiency? So here I've done some, some preliminary calculation. So I have studied the, um, the noise generated by the second test. So the second test was a plus 30 to minus 30, 30 kilo amps. And so what I've got is uh, by analyzing the, the voltage signal is that I got a, a five mini volt noise. This is the noise I have calculated. So on average, it is about five uh, mini volts. And here we have uh, some measurement that was presented by uh, previous paper in 2016. We have a squeeze test, and we are going from very stable cell that uh, was about a bit, let's say, six mini volt of standard deviation, so six of uh, mini volt of noise. And when you squeeze, 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 get to the point where you have no spike and you gave me a short circuit you will reach the noise level of 40 mini volt. So that means that uh, the the noise that is predicted by uh, the, the test in the MHG Valdez is about the same range as a very stable pot noise. That is only 10% to a, a very unstable or a very highly unstable cell. So that means that and there's another way to calculate if I use the Gary PRC uh, current efficiency model. Is, uh, his model is uh, calculating noise differently. It is the maximum minus minimum uh, voltage for a period of time. Uh, and it is calculated in the, in, uh, in the micro home. So for the same test two, this is the, the noise calculated according to this method. It is about 0.1 micro ohm of noise. And uh, according to Gary Tarsi, the coefficient is minus one in this model, which means that this kind of noise level is subtracting 0.1% of current efficiency to a cell. And if you have a very noisy pot that is about 10 times I mean, that noise level, then you have, you're subtracting about 1%. But the noise that we are getting is in the range of a stable cell, and according to Gary Tarsi model, uh, it is a, a noise level that is subtracting 0.1% of current efficiency. And that's the noise you get anyway. So we are substituting what the noise from one way to the noise of another way, but the same intensity of noise. So uh, based on this, I'm speculating that uh, there's, you can easily live with that kind of situation. So we have, so the conclusion is that we have uh, demonstrating that we can, in addition to oscillate or dynamically oscillating the current in a pot line to stabilize a pot, we can simply limit ourselves to dynamically uh, uh, pump and, uh, oscillate current in, in compensation loop that as a result of only compensation that magnetic field in, in the cell. So completely not affecting the, the way the cell is running. Simply is magnetic environment will be different. And this compensation, if we are using superconductor, is not affecting the grid. And this compensation or this oscillation uh, will permit uh, to stabilize the cell uh, enough to reduce the ACD. 
And of course, at this point, we don't have a final number of how much ECG we can easily uh, remove without introducing a complication to the operation. So finally, the conclusion is that uh, it looks like something that has the merit to be tested. And we hope that somebody will uh, carry on the test. Thank you very much for your attention.